Hi everybody and welcome to my kitchen. This is Jamila and today I'm going to show you how to make mock uh, tuna salad using um, soaked sunflower seeds. So to get started let me go ahead and tell you about the ingredients that I have here. I have here two cups of soaked sunflower seeds. These were soaked overnight, rinsed and then drained. This here is two uh, stalks, no, I'm sorry, three stalks of celery, uh, just uh, rough chopped. Half a cup of fresh parsley. One half of a medium sized onion. And this is the juice of half a lemon. I have uh, dulse and also kelp. This will give it that fishy kind of flavor. Black pepper, pink Himalayan sea salt, and dill. You can either use dry dill or fresh dill. I didn't have any fresh dill on hand, so I'm using dry. Okay, now to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to get our trusty food processor right here. I am going to put in the sunflower seeds. lemon juice um, and a little bit of the parsley now I'm going to be adding the dulcinic kelp by taste so I don't have a definite um, measurement for you guys and I'm just gonna put in maybe about this much of the dulse flakes to start and we're going to give it about that much of the kelp put the top on here and Go ahead and blend that up. Okay, you want to make sure that you scrape the sides to get all of your sunflower seeds incorporated in here. Now what you're going to try to do is to get the sunflower seeds blended so that it resembles um, tuna. So that's what I'm doing right now. Now if you find that your sunflower seeds are a little dry, the mixture is a little dry, you can add just a little bit of water but you don't want to make it too wet so then it'll be all mushy. That's not what we're going for. So just keep an eye on it when it's in the food processor and then make sure you uh, scrape down the sides periodically and it should be fine. Okay, now mine looks a little bit dry, so I'm going to add just a little bit of water to it. Just a little bit of water. Okay. And just to show you now, I have this to where the texture of it looks like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and taste this to see if I need to add more of the kelp or the dulse flakes. And also the salt and pepper as well. 
which I didn't add before, but I will. Okay, so we need more kelp. And those. And now I'm going to add the rest of my seasoning is the black pepper, the pink salt, and the dill weed. And the reason why I like to taste my whatever I'm making first before I add the seasoning, it kind of gives me like a base because uh, I know what kind of what the flavor is that I'm going for. So um, that's just the way I like to do it. I guess it might seem a little backwards, but I like to taste it kind of plain, put the seasoning in, and then when I get to that taste level, then I know when to stop. And that's one of the reasons why I don't measure. Because a lot of times in recipes, when you have measurements, it's never enough seasoning for me. I always end up adding more, so. But you know, people have different ways of doing things, so. That's just the way I like to do it. So I'm just going to give this a whiz here, get it all incorporated. Right down the sides. And actually, I'm going to add just a teeny tiny bit, a little more water. I think it just needs a, just a little bit more lemon juice, kelp and adults, and I think it would be fine. Put a little bit more lemon juice in here. About half of the half, if you will. Um, a little bit more of the dill. A little bit more salt. Dulse. Actually, this is the kelp. that all up. Take another taste. Just about perfect. It's it's good. Just a tiny bit more dill. Okay, now at this time, what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the rest of the parsley into the processor. A little bit of this onion. the onion and some of the celery. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to process this on low and let the blades chop uh, these items up into small chunks and I will go ahead and after that decide whether or not I want to have more or less. I don't want the onion to overpower but I do like a lot of onion but you know I, I like to taste as I go so that I can get it perfect <laughs> so all right now I'm gonna go ahead and 
check my lap tuna here. Now, depending on how chunky you like your vegetables and the mock tuna, this one lets you see what I have here so far, what it looks like. Kind of looks like real tuna. And the chucks of the celery, and you can see the, um, the parsley in there. Um, we'll just go ahead and give this a little stir here. Just want to see if I don't have any big chunks of anything in here and I'm just going to go ahead and give this a taste to see if the amount of celery and onion is okay for me. I would like to have just a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is put half of maybe about half of the onions that I have left in this bowl here and there. And maybe about this much more. Oops! <laughs> that hit the floor, so excuse me while I pick that up. About this much more of the celery I'm going to put in. And then we're going to do a pulse chop until I get that um, down to the size that I want. And then I'll come back and we'll taste it again. Additional onion and celery chopped them to, to the pieces, the size pieces, pieces that I prefer. And of course, when you're making it, you chop it, process it to what you prefer, of course. Just set this over out of the way. And let you take another look at the finished product there. And I am going to take another taste. Mmm. It does taste like tuna. Okay. And we are going to put our mock tuna pate in a bowl. And of course, if you watch my other video, y'all know. I do not like to leave my whatever it is that I'm making. I like to scrape it all out. So you're just going to have to be patient with me while I do all that. this bowl here. Okay, so just gonna put these in the sink. And we just wanna wipe that off. I have a bunch of stuff on the edge of my bowl here, but there is the finished product here. Now you might be thinking, okay, well. 
can you do with this? Well, you could do with it what you would normally do with any uh, tuna salad. Okay, why can't I get that in the shot? There you go. <laughs> I will get this camera, working this camera right, and this is my second video, so y'all just gonna have to bear with me, please. But I think the recipes are, are worth the little nuances. So anyway, what I'm going to do is, because it's my lunch time, and I haven't eaten lunch yet, I am going to make a sandwich. Okay, the bread from my previous video. I'll just get out two slices. Okay, I have two slices here. Let's go lay those out as like so. I have some onion, broccoli sprouts, and tomato. The so first one I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take some of the tuna, put it on the bread like so. Even though there's onion in my uh, uh, mock tuna pate, I love red onions and I just love them. So I am going to put more onion on my sandwich. And now I'm gonna add a slice or two of the tomato. And my sprouts. I'm just going to take just a teeny tiny bit more of the pate and put it on this slice here. We have a tuna sandwich with red onion, tomato, and sprouts. Well, I hope uh, you liked this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And to um, get more content, if you like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for thank you so much for watching.